Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to the final session of the final Neptune Impact Festival for 2020. Uh, we've just heard from Stein and Nikolai from the co-op. Very interesting to see how S5 has enabled co-op to profit fully from their investments in SAP technologies and Neptune software. Uh, I can now introduce Ian Davis from Zebra Technologies, who will talk about working at the performance edge and how Zebra provides a service management platform called Visibility IQ Foresight. Uh, this will consist of a presentation followed by a live Q&A. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining. This session is on actionable insights. Uh, my name is Ian Davies, working for Zebra Technologies. I hope that uh, you're all safely masked um, at home um, or in your offices, and I appreciate your attention. The topic here is actionable insights. And an actionable, ins actionable insight has two dimensions to it, perhaps. Um, the first dimension is that of the people that are going to take actions. And the other dimension is information. And that information is based on analysis, it's based on logic, and it's based on capturing data and serving it up in a way which is readily accessible and digestible by by people. A strong theme running through this short presentation will be how information when presented in the right way can be used to drive perhaps the biggest productivity gain of all, which is achieving higher levels of productivity from staff. I'd like to start off the session by referring back to a presentation given earlier in this series by my colleague Dan Qualiana. His session was on surfacing information, presenting that through application programming interfaces to other applications such as workflow applications such as service desks. The focus of this presentation is on how Zebra has developed a portal which provides business intelligence, alert, alerting and reporting capabilities that can be configured and set up to provide role-based access to information and data. Looking at this diagram and to perhaps focus a little bit on the, the business payback of doing this, Dan used blue dots to illustrate the flow of physical good through a supply chain. At each of these points then, which will be picking, replenishment, put away, driving, a scan operation or equivalent is taking place. A couple of things very important there actually. One is ensuring that the right devices are in the right hands, in the right numbers to facilitate that happening without disruption to happen in, in the correct and in a timely way. And from that then there's the use of the asset itself and the data it the data it captures. From here I wanted to refer back to something that would be a common background for many of us um, and how what we learn from implementing other applications can be applied into this relatively new area, and I think an underinvested in area of the performance edge. I worked for SAP back in the 1990s. We were focused there on helping organizations answer a series of fairly simple questions. And didn't seem quite like simple questions at the time, but they were, what stock do we have? What price point should we selling at? How quickly is it gonna take us to get some more? And what do we think our likely demand profile is over the next reporting and ordering period? What we learned through that process is that organizations need to change. They need to change their processes. They perhaps need some new roles to work with the data and the information that they're presented with. Now, applying that across to the performance edge, 
the mega trends that we've seen over the last few years are an increased investment in technology in the hands of operational staff and colleagues underpinning that has been much more powerful devices capable of running a more sophisticated operate operating system which can run multiple applications and that opens up both the opportunity for more productivity it also opens up an interesting new management challenge slightly peripheral to the discussion here about a collaborative business application is the role of an MDM. MDMs are typically designed around two core functions. They're designed around securing a device and securing information on that device and potentially the capability of pushing out updates to applications and firmware and updates to operating system updates to devices. Visibility IQ uses those capabilities as a base level building block. Its design aim, though, is to surface and present information rather than simply restrict access to it. We then are working on Zebra is investing heavily in a collaborative platform which will enable teams to work more effectively together, sharing an application sharing the data and providing insights. Managing at that performance edge has some new things to look at and work with. Managing multiple applications, which having multiple applications is a good thing. Impact on the resources of a device may or may not be a good thing. An application here that enables a business user, an IS person, to look at the resource demands on a device, anticipate issues, think about the user experience, and handle other activities such as compliance, and do that through a medium, through a portal, which is collecting information from multiple data sources, making it easy to work with, and providing an attractive user interface. That user interface is something that Zebra has invested heavily in and we've been supported in that by the growing user base of the application. We now have something like 1 million active licenses globally. The application is available globally. And here I've picked out something which is, would be a, a relatively new, if, if not uh, a, a completely new area of, um, of, of monitor for many organisations, which would be to look at scan rate success and productivity. In this particular session here, I've, or for this particular slide, I have in mind um, the IT manager of a distribution company. Um, a distribution company that's part of a large retailer. Um, and Gary's role in working with VIQ and working with a technology refresh was to push around about 110 devices out to 10 different locations. In the past, and I simplify slightly, the central location would have taken in the devices, installed the applications, configured the build, shipped them out to sites, monitored that for a short period, potentially going to each of those sites, and then after that period, they would hear back when something went wrong. The Visibility IQ business platform provides a way of keeping that contact going all the time without the incremental cost that previously would have been associated with that. The concepts we have here, this, this short user journey is in setting up um, an activity to monitor scanning productivity, create a role, which is a, a person or groups of people, associate sites to that, which associates the data that somebody can see through simple to access sliders, set up alert levels, which reflect into a dashboard, which is visually coded and provides a summary of activities and performance, and then allows the drill down to a lower level of information. In this particular case, the ability to see scan rate success by date, by site. Um, initial rollouts we've seen 
scan rates that would perhaps be in the 60 percent level they can vary greatly between sites it's an opportunity to look at um, application performance how users interact with the application think about target training to achieve a target level of performance of about 80 percent 90 percent plus would be a good at a good level for scan rate success so there's a couple of things there that are really business important coming out from this simple capability which is looking at the user experience based around how colleagues and staff are getting on with applications and devices and then if you can keep a scan a high scan success rate you're potentially minimizing the need to bring any additional contingent labor to cope with peaks and troughs in demands and that can that can flow into some considerable cost savings we want information to be accessible quickly so here a bit of an example will flow through from the app which shows looking at something like smart battery health where a simple click here takes you down to some analysis of remaining useful battery life and from that you can go down to an individual device level um, is that pure analysis of scientific interest only no it can uh, enable you to replace batteries in a in a timely fashion um, to ensure that there's no disruptions to um, productivity on a shift uh, it can allow you to only replace batteries when they need to be replaced which is good for cost control and good for the environment zebra's um, huge investment in this area is to take the power take the com potential complexity and turn it into something that's visually attractive and easy to use and enables enables individuals to uh, individuals to take on KPIs such as monitoring shrink. Behind shrink could be accidentally placing a device in the wrong place to loss. The capabilities of the application allow you to see when something was last used and from that avoid accidental placement, focus on areas where you there, there might be an actual um, loss or theft taking place. Moving on a little, uh, a little, little from that, um, I wanted to show you a piece about analytics and how analytics could be presented to individuals outside the IS function, perhaps on a service desk that would be specialists in an area, but not uh, detailed and not having detailed technical training. So here we have alerts, which would come up in somebody's dashboard, written in plain language, something to look at and examine, such as charging behavior, ability to expand that out and see some diagnosis on recommended action, and then take, take whatever action is appropriate from that. These things then, a brief look at the user journeys, bring us towards the conclusion of this update session, which is about our design aims. Our design aim is to provide a platform for more effective collaboration between different groups of people through sharing information, providing a common vocabulary, and generally improving the user experience through looking for shortfalls, avoiding disruptions and anticipating events before they happen. In summary, the four key areas here then are visibility, just making it easy for people to access information. And that screenshot there on the left hand side shows some individuals who work for Whirlpool. Whirlpool were kind enough to create a video with us which is available on YouTube and they had a number of proof points and examples of the ROI that they've been able to achieve simply by being able to quickly access information and that provided a platform 
for the information services team, the supply chain team and operations to work together to reduce um, disruptions on the shop floor. And they gave an example which always sticks with me, um, which is the failure of a device in the hands of a colleague on a shop floor can take something like 81 minutes to replace. That's a very significant drop in productivity and could be quite a horrendous impact that could simply be avoided by looking at charging behaviours, by anticipating the replacement of something like um, a battery, or by looking at um, have we got people that are, are struggling to use an application as evidenced by some other facets of the system. Analytics, good example there would be an organisation that I worked with was able to, through the use of VIQ, expand the number of devices in the hands of their operational staff from around about 800 to about 2600 without recruiting anybody else into the central IS function simply because the collection the recording the use of information had been reduced down compliance ready way seconds away from checking on operating system release levels, patching levels, potential security issues available to you there with the system actually alerting you if there's something you need to look at. We are pushing into the predictive capability areas. There are some things already delivered in the application. There are the th some things that will be coming next year. That can include warnings on charging behaviour, utilization levels between sites. We're pushing into the area of media consumption through our printers, which would enable you to optimize purchases based around actual consumption levels. And then in summary, um, and this goes right back to the start, bringing your teams together and the teams I talked about here, the teams the team that we see on the left hand side is information system, supply chain and operations, all working more collect, um, all working better together simply by having the right information at the right time shared in an attractive format. I do hope you found this interesting and look forward to questions. Thank you so much. All right, fantastic. Uh, Ian, are you around? Yes, I am. Perfect. Hello, welcome. Uh, it's great to have you here. How are you doing? Are you ready for some questions? Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, yes, I hope to. And <clears throat> I have a new respect for people that uh, record things in um, uh, 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 over virtual media. So uh, yeah, thanks, Lloyd. Yeah, so it's an art to to master. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Don't worry. OK, let's uh, let's start. First of all, uh, how many customers are using this and how have you boosted user adoption of this 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 solution? Um, OK, um, thanks for that. So a, a relatively easy one and a slightly more complicated one. Um, at this particular point in time, we have around about one million <clears throat> um, licenses deployed. I'm not quite sure how, how that translates into uh, in, in, into customers, but it's a it's a it's a fair number, um, and it's spread globally from um, um, through 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 the Nordics, um, Europe, um, South America, and and Africa. So there's it, it a good uh, good global spread. Um, the, the question of user adoption is that's always a tricky one. I mean, um, we we make th certain things available um, through. Um, the, the online portal, such as um, um, self-paced training material. Um, after initial go live, we run um, typically a one hour WebEx for um, key users. Some people would call those super users. Um, and then for periods of time, we can also take on for a, for a customer um, running report, running um, reports within VIQ and then summarizing those into reports and submitting them on a weekly or a monthly basis as part of a service review pack. So um, those are the things we do. We also try and encourage um, our customers to have like 
one or two or three key performance indicators that we really want to repeat, improve on. It could be shrink. Um, it could be um, increasing scan rate productivity. Um, it could be ensuring that the, the, the there are no disruptions at an operative level from something like battery charging behaviors. So those are the kinds of things we do. That's great. Uh, is this specific to one industry? Uh, and could you tell me about, uh, I think you've mentioned some of them already, but any other tangible benefits that you can you can get from implementing this? Okay, thank you. Um, so, I mean, uh, this is um, what we often quaintly call a, a horizontal application. So it, it, it works um, across different industry types. Um, I, I would say that as I've worked with the service and the application over the last four years, um, the initial um, really fast in um, uptake was with companies that uh, are in the air distribution, transport, um, where they have um, critical devices moving around um, and there's a lot of moving pieces going on within their supply chain. Um, after that would be retailers, um, you know, particularly um, uh, for those with significant warehousing and distribution um, operations. Um, and more recently, we've seen a number of manufacturing companies, um, uh, you know, particularly automotive, uh, move into using um, VIQ. Um, and then I think your second question was tangible benefits. Um, I mean, that nearly always comes down to the, you know, the two or three key metrics, such as, you know, reducing unexplained loss, which for a lot of companies will be in the band of um, four to 11% of their devices per annum so wow. yeah most companies i i talk to um when they do an analysis find that they've lost between 50 and 100 thousand euros of devices in the last 12 months that they just don't know what's happened to them crazy <laughs> it, it it's crazy um and and in generally we find that that actually have been um, put in drawers, they've been put away somewhere, and so much time has been left that it's been difficult to find them. So mm. that lo lo loss is key. Um, and then the, the other one is, is just that focus on um, making sure there's um, no loss of productivity um, through, you know, really obvious things like making sure that drivers and, um, you know, people in the warehouse go out with a, with a device that will last their shift without direct disruption. I mean, those are the key those are the key tangible ones. One that we've seen flowing through a lot actually is um, the ability to drive up scan rate success. And that has a real flow through into the number of people you need in part of your business. So, um, so Great. typically ROI, uh, positive ROI within the first 12 months. Well, that answers one of my next questions. I was gonna say, how long does it take on average to implement the solution uh, and see a positive return on investment? So you say 12 months for ROI, but what's the implementation time looking like? Yeah, I mean, I think um, in the Whirlpool uh, case study uh, I referenced, they talked about um, getting 63% of the money back within the first uh, about nine months, I think it was actually. Um, they did though include some intangible benefits in there um, as well. Well, one of the beauties of um, a cloud-based system is that um, Zebra is doing most of the work. So we're um, setting up all of the elements of this in the cloud. Uh, and our uh, internal goal is to ensure that on average, we go live with the IQ um, within 21 days of um, receiving an order. Wow, that's, uh, um, that's very fast. Um, indeed. Um, uh, uh, below that, or in supporting that, or in parallel to that, whichever way you like to think about it, um, there's a need to um, uh, in install an agent on a device, typically um, open up firewall ports where required, etc. But, you know, we're looking at something within a month. That's great. Uh, which, which does lead me on nicely to my next question. Uh, does Visibility IQ support all Zebra devices or will there be support for third party devices? Um, slight flip on the head for that is that um, Visibility IQ is operating system dependent. So um, it works with um, Android, iOS, Windows, um, Linux, and I, I'm just stumbling slightly over saying Windows because um, it depends on the version. Um, and if you, and, and I, I've struggled to keep up to take, date with the different versions, but a number of them have gone out of support now and, and those can present some challenges, but it's operating system dependent. The majority of devices I would say 
um, on on vi visibility IQ, and each customer has their own instance, would be would be Zebra. So we're probably talking about twenty percent non Zebra, something like that. Okay, well, it's good to see that it's still supported and it's OS dependent rather than completely locked down to just uh, just Zebra devices. Then, yep. Uh, could you tell us more about the predictive aspects of the system that might be implemented in the future? Wow, that's another really good question. Um, so um, I think predictive capabilities sit within the application in 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 a couple of levels. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll say what's there now, um, okay. and then I'll, I'll say a bit about what's on the roadmap to kind of collect my thoughts about that one. Sure. Um, so... The, uh, in there right now, and there's the ability to um, make some predictions based on things like um, utilization for your capacity planning. That, that comes across from the devices and operation view, and, and it comes across from the utilization view. So from that, um, and from, for instance, the battery reports, you can make predictive anal pr predictions about capacity and location and use, etc. In the, the battery area, one of the recently introduced um, capabilities um, is has the catchy name of remaining useful back, remaining useful life. Um, so after we've collected um, a smart battery's data for 30 days, it starts to appear in the report. And now um, we're carrying out analysis on that individual battery, um, how it's been charged, um, its chemical composition, um, the environment that it's been in. Um, when we make predictions in terms of remaining useful for life. That's used from, for, from a service, you know, potential avoiding service issues. Um, and then it's also um, a pretty good thing for the environment uh, because you can replace as needed rather than replaced by saying, well, we replace everything every 12 months or 18 months or three years or, or, or when somebody rings up and shouts, you know, so you can take that the, there's those two um, facets in there. And then the third one um, would, would be where we're actually looking to um, take the data in there um, and predict things like, say, uh, with printers, and Zebra printers come under the scope of VIQ from Q1, um, where you'll be able to look in there and, for instance, um, see the number of labels that you've printed and make, uh, and, 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 and the system will indicate to you when you should start to be reordering based on your consumption level um, over a period of time and the, the size of labels you produce, it, um, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the areas we're working on. A bit further out than that, we're looking at things like the accelerometer in the devices um, to see if they've been used outside you know, normal tolerance. And from that, you can start to take a view on, well, actually, um, there's an area of the business that's treating those devices a bit too roughly, perhaps. That's, that's really cool. There's loads of useful information you can get back there. Uh, I have one more question, uh, maybe a bit off topic, but it's come through from the chat. Um, is there anything you can tell me about the HD 4000, which I believe are the, the AR glasses that Zebra are, are producing? Uh, other than saying they look really cool, um, <laughs> um, it, it, that's, that's not my specific area. So I, I don't know if we have somebody else on the, um, on, 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 on the line that can talk about, um, can, can talk about that. So I, 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 I can't answer that one with any confidence. That's fine. That's fine. That's no problem. I, I just thought it was worth a shot anyway, <laughs> just in case there was <laughs> anything cool you knew. Um, I think it does. I mean, the only link point with, with VIQ, and it, it is a, a very valid link point. It's, it's, you know, Zebra's focus on trying to make things more usable and see what's going on. And that fits into that category as well. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely an interesting uh, use of, of technology I'm, I'm excited to to get some on and have a look through i'm yet to try them so i was just intrigued to ask as well thank you. yep <laughs> well ian thank you very much uh, it's been great chatting to you um and with that i'd like to conclude today's session um that means wrapping up and closing off the neptune impact festival for 2020 uh, nobody really could have expected what this year has thrown our way and we may not be able to meet in person um, but we're still able to learn and grow from each other via this format which is fantastic uh, it's been great to see so many partners and customers willing to share their stories and successes over the past few months uh, this network of people who share the same passion for neptune it's great to be a part of and i'd like to thank everyone who's taken time to present and answer questions uh, and finally thank you to all of you for tuning in and watching 
Uh, hopefully next year we'll have the chance to see each other face to face at Neptune Impact Festival 2021. Until then, stay safe, take care, happy Neptuning. Goodbye, everyone.